Thanks so much for joining us. Happy Valentine's Day. And let's all rise. Thank you. Good afternoon, Miami. My name is Sherry Blanton. I'm senior aide for Commissioner Mark Sarnoff with the city of Miami. Uh, welcome to District 2. We're so excited to have you here today. And um, I would like to present um, to the wonderful organizers of the One Billion Rising a proclamation on behalf of the city of Miami. Whereas the city of Miami values the philosophy that cherishes our diversity, sisterhood, and brotherhood, seeking to preserve, elevate the quality of life, and whereas the 2013, 2014, <laughs> One Billion Rising campaign to end human trafficking and the abuse of women worldwide, considered the largest mass action initiative in history, began as a call to action based on the staggering United Nations statistic that one in three women on the planet will be beaten or raped during her lifetime. Now, therefore, I, Tomas Regalado, mayor of the city of Miami, joined by Commissioner D. Mar Mark D. Sarnoff, do hereby proclaim the 14th day of February in this year, 2014, as One Billion Rising for Justice Day, Miami. Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Skeyola Aiken, and welcome. Uh, woo! Uh, this is a historical moment. Um, we are part of the biggest global action ever, to end, ever taken place to end violence against women and girls. Um, and we're here. Thank you, Miami. Thank you, South Florida. We're so excited. I want, you, I want to personally thank you for being here, for being counted, for making your word count and for speaking out, speaking up, um, telling your stories, sharing your stories, and helping others share their stories. Thank you for caring. Thank you for demanding justice. And thank you for rising. Um, please, please, if you don't have one of these ribbons, take one. They're, they're scattered. People are handing them out all around. We are thrilled to be on the Miami-Dade College campus this year and to share this energy with college students and faculty and staff. Um, and we are here because one in three women will be beaten or raped in their lifetime. And because sex trafficking is a really big problem in our community. And because 300,000 girls on college campuses in America are assaulted every year. We are here because we can make a difference. We're here because of the incredible work of this woman, right here by my side, um, who has put everything she has in, in making this happen. And she's a warrior. She's a vagina warrior. She's a cancer survivor. Uh, an incredible e example of a shining light and perseverance. And it's not about us, but you need to know. Um, and so I just want to thank you, Maria. Let me cry. Let me cry. And I am here because I honestly believe that change can happen in our lifetimes. And I believe that I'm not alone, and probably every one of you here is with me. Your presence here represents hundreds of thousands of people whose voices aren't always heard. And the media who are here today are giving all of us voice. So can we thank the incredible media turnout? Also, the Women's Fund of Miami has been so instrumental in bringing all you amazing organizations together. There are over 30 community organizations who are here with us today that can empower each and every one of us to do something about whatever issue comes up. They're here. Please visit them. Please talk to them. This event is about you. What's, what, what, what do you expect? We're going to be here for about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, and you're not going to just sit here. It's not going to be a talking head activity. It's about you. It's about learning. 
please visit the tables. We have, I invite Jorge Vetia, who's going to be up after me, to explain an amazing, amazing hacktivism activity that we all get to do. It's naughty. It's going to make the news, and it's going to go on fire because we're starting the hacktivism here. But there's going to be a lot of copycats, and we want it. We have other amazing people who are going to tell you about this sacred space of the intention tent. And uh, listen, they're going to tell you what to do. We have experts who are going to be, be talking to us. We have people who couldn't be here today, like Robert Redford and Jane Fonda, who had to be somewhere else, who are going to talk to you by film. Enjoy yourselves. This is your event. Thank you for coming and being counted. Good afternoon, One Billion Rising. Woo! Come on, got to be a little louder than that. Let's do that one more time. Good afternoon, One Billion Rising. Woo! All right, thank you. Um, I thank you, Maria, for the opportunity and the Women's Fund and for One Billion Rising for organizing this. It's so important to get the word out, this information about sex trafficking. It exists, and we need to respond to it. Uh, we have an opportunity today to respond in a unique manner, and hopefully it will impact lives. Uh, what we're doing, it's called Jamming Sex Trafficking. We've created a website, it's called jamsextrafficking.org, and you have an opportunity there to place your name, your email, select a Valentine's card, and select where it'll appear online. What we're doing is targeting spaces online where women are currently being sold and bought right here in Miami-Dade. A lot of that focuses in on the back page ads. And today, when buyers go look at these areas, what we want them to find is instead of pictures of women in promiscuous positions and half-dressed, we want them to find these Valentine's cards showing women with crowns and holding hearts and just talking about the things they deserve, which are love, hope, and a life free from uh, slavery. So. Today, I ask you, please uh, go to jamsextrafficking.org and complete the form. There's a free option, and your ad will appear in a personal section. There's a $3 option, and your ad will appear in the dating section. And there's a $14 option that your ad will appear in the escort section. Now, this is not something that we're profiting off. It's just to cover the cost of posting those ads on Backpage. And believe you, what we want tonight around 7 o'clock is to not encourage you to go to Backpage, but we'll take some pictures of uh, what, what will appear and hopefully what you'll see is just a cascade of images of love and hope and rescue instead of images of, of women selling themselves. So I thank you for this opportunity and uh, continue please celebrating in your intention and please get to know the community partners. Each one of these organizations play a valuable role in the lives that we're trying to rescue from trafficking here. And thank you. Hello, Miami, and I'm so glad to see everyone here that turned out. I'm Susan Miner, and I'd like everyone right now to take a minute with me to place one hand over your heart, and we're going to connect our energies, and we're going to do this through the breath, that which gives us life. So take a nice deep breath, and as you exhale, let go of all tension. Okay. Take another nice deep breath, breathing in the love and the peace around you. And as you exhale, relax some more. One more time, take a nice deep breath, connecting your heart with everyone here. And exhale, good. We have an intention tent, and the intention tent is there for you to release your story if that's what you need to do today. I'll be there and others will be there to support you. And we're asking everyone, 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 to come and make an intention. And an intention is simply your dream, your aim, your goal, how you see the future. So come on over and bring your life skills, bring your life experiences, and 
put down an intention of what you see for an empowered and free future for all women all over the world. Okay, so please come by. Thank you. One billion women and young girls will be raped or beaten in their lifetime. I'm Robert Redford, and I'm one of a billion rising to help stop violence against women. Statistics tell us that one in three women will become victims to violence, but this is not a women's issue, it's a global crisis. One Billion Rising is the movement that seeks to put an end to violence against women. And with your help, we can do this. So let's work together to ensure that no more mothers, no more daughters, sisters, aunts, nieces, no more grandmothers experience violence. So please join me and one billion others around the world on Valentine's Day as we invite one billion women and those who love them to walk out, dance, rise up, and demand an end to this violence. Hi, I am Juanes and we are raising for our children and your children. I'm Mati Herrera Bauer. My name is Suzanne Allison McDowell. My name is Constance Collins. I am Tracy Wilson Morning. Miami, I'm rising. I'm here for my mother, for my daughter, our sisters, our wives. We are rising to give voice. And I want to be heard. Come dance with me. Join us. Vamos a bailar. We rise. This is bigger than us. My name is Lupe, and I am rising today. I am an FIU student. I am rising because I want change. I want an end to violence against women. I want college campuses to be safe. Join me today to end violence against women on college campuses. Let's rise, let's dance, let's end this violence. Hoy, únete conmigo, un billón de pie, únete a millones de personas. I'm just gonna dance. I'm just gonna be in the, I'm gonna shake it off. I'm Rosario Dawson. I'm an actress, I'm an activist. I like to call myself an activist. I'm rising because one in three women will be raped, killed, or beaten in her lifetime. We compose the majority of the planet. I think it's, it's scary and insane to imagine that women's issues and girls' issues are a side issue. And as long as we continue to not stand up and rise and make it a, a, the thing that is the, at the forefront, we're gonna see every other issue before us continue to fail. Everything that we care about will not move forward as long as women and girls are not safe. So it's time for us to stand up for that. I'm, I am rising because acid attacks are becoming more prevalent in Colombia. I am rising because of child brides in India. I am rising because of girls who are getting raped on their way to class. I am rising because I'm a woman. I'm rising because I'm a human. I'm rising because it's about time. So I hope that you will rise with us and step out of your offices, step out of your homes, step out of your comfort zone and rise and dance on beautiful Mother Earth and make it the largest movement the world has ever seen. And when you think about just the concept of slavery, it's a particularly insidious form of slavery human trafficking, sex trafficking, sexual exploitation. In one word, slavery. It's unimaginable, isn't it? That in this year, human trafficking and 2014, they're so incongruous if you think about those two concepts. The day we, as a global society, choose to honor those that we love, cherish and respect, our lovers, our children, our elders, our friends. And yet, here we are talking about the sad reality that there's a lack of respect for women and children throughout this globe. So today, one billion men and women across the globe. Isn't that amazing? Think about that. One billion voices, yes, across the globe 
are rising to stop the sale of children and women in sex, to stop the abuse of these women and children. They are not for sale. We have to put a final stop to this slavery. And we can only do this together, all of you united here, as one common goal. We have to be relentless and we have to be driven. And we have to say once and for all, no more, no mas, basta ya. Today, young girls, not even old enough to drive, are walking the streets of our cities every night to earn money for their pimps, for their masters. They are brought into this life of servitude when they're as young as 12 and 13 years old. Now just pause and think about that for a minute. 12 and 13? Do you have children? Think about your own children. Think about your nieces. Think about your grandchildren. Think about your sisters. Think about yourself at that age. 12 and 13 years old. They're victimized, they're sold, and sometimes because of the sale that they're being sold for prostitution, they are essentially being raped five times a day, five weeks out, days out of the week. Five times a day, five days out of the week. Shocking. In the United States and in this great, beautiful state of Florida, that we, the state of Florida, are ranked as either the second or the third in the terms of the number of victims of human trafficking. That's why I try to do my small role as your state attorney. We created a human trafficking task force and a prosecution unit with specially trained, experienced assistant state attorneys and investigators and service providers. And ladies and gentlemen, we now have 171 filed cases, criminal cases, in our criminal courts. And we have another pending 100 investigations. Now, I have to admit to you, you know how many I had two years ago before I understood what this was? Till I understood the dynamics, the depth, the gravity? Zero. We changed the law, and we changed the way we looked at it, and we found these victims coming in as victims of domestic violence, beaten, tortured, handcuffed, drugged. Why? They would drug them because they didn't want to prostitute anymore. Sometimes they'd make them steal. They'd do anything to not have to be raped over and over and over again for the pimp's money. That's why I'm very proud to report to you that we had a conviction just last this year. 34-year-old Robert Burton was a pimp. He was sentenced to 15 years in state prison because he was selling girls to prostitution. Shortly after that one, we had a conviction of Robert Burton Jr. for selling women into prostitution as a family business. As a family business, it was passed down from his father to his son. Junior was a pimp for over 12 years. He received a 15-year prison sentence. His father was Robert Burton Sr. He was also a pimp, and he had pimped Burton's mother. Eventually got her pregnant, that's why there was Junior. But he had been pimping her, and then she became as a former prosecutor, a recruiter of other girls. She also went to state prison. This year, we also had the conviction of a John. He got a 10-year sentence because he was out there. We got to talk about the demand side as well as the trafficker side. So ladies and gentlemen, these are just a few examples of the predators that we, those of us in law enforcement and those of us in the general public and media, thank you, thank you. You're out here, at least it's a beautiful day, it's a beautiful venue, but it's your Valentine's Day too. But you know what, this message doesn't get out without all of you, with your, your messages taking back to the hundreds of people that will see 
how we are all united in this. So I want to thank our media partners in this. I also want to thank our legislative partners. Two years ago, we didn't have a solid human trafficking statute in Florida law. And we were able to, working with other partners, also our attorney general, we went to Tallahassee and our partners in Tallahassee gave us the tools we needed to go to court and to fight to get these predators off of the street so that we can protect our women and children. I will continue to work ceaselessly with our legislator, with all of our partners. We never want to be able to see another young girl or woman come into our office as a victim. We have victim, beautiful victim witness persons that work with these victims. Their whole lives are shattered. They don't have a life. We have to be their voice. We have to bring life back to those broken bodies and bended minds. Each one of us has to be involved in this. And so I am blessed to be here. I want to thank all of the organizers. This doesn't happen without a lot of effort and a lot of commitment. There's so many wonderful volunteers here. I was hoping just to reach out to one million voices. And here we got one billion voices. How about that? Yes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you all, and God bless all those girls and those women out there. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me today. My name is Katerina Rosenblatt, and I'm the president and founder of There Is Hope For Me, an anti-trafficking organization that works right here in South Florida to help rescue and restore survivors of domestic violence and human trafficking, because I myself am a survivor. I'm gonna share with you my story today, and I'm so thankful that you all came out to um, work and help us in this cause, because there's not enough people doing the work, but there's a lot of trafficking going on. As a young girl here in South Florida, I first experienced trafficking and recruitment at a hotel in Miami Beach when I was 13 years old. Similar to the Madonna case um, here in the strip clubs in South Beach, I was young and naive and um, was approached by a 19-year-old who recruited me, gained my trust, and saw the vulnerability that I had when you come from a home where there's dysfunction and abuse, you're a target, you're prey for these predators, as um, Catherine Rundle said. And I do have to give them um, applause for their tireless effort because we work alongside law enforcement and state attorneys and really believe in the prosecution efforts. So would you join me in giving um, State Attorney Rundle a round of applause for her efforts in creating a task force and thank you so much for for all that you do, we appreciate you. Thank you. It's because of her that um, many children are saved tonight. Without those men put away, they would be sold as we speak here. At 13 years old, I never saw it coming. Mary was a friend and someone I thought I could trust. She told me that um, the older man connected to her was someone I could call daddy. And before I knew it, they tried to sell me to a 65-year-old man in the hotel for my virginity. She told me to wear a white dress, and I was going to be the center of a game where I was going to be the bride. And you can see how they used my innocence um, to gain my trust and vulnerability, and I went along with it until I was in the hotel room with this 65-year-old man, and he was half-dressed and ready to partake in his transaction. She um, negotiated my price. He was willing to pay $550 for me. 20 years ago, that's what an American Virgin girl went for here in Miami. Thankfully, I had um, received Jesus at a Billy Graham crusade, and I just prayed, and God protected me. I didn't take the drugs, and I fought for my freedom and my dignity. I didn't understand what was going on, but at 13, I had a feeling that this wasn't right. And when he asked me if anyone would miss me if I was gone, I said, yeah, my mom would miss me, and she'll come looking for me. And with that, he kicked me out. 
and I was safe for the night, but I would be kidnapped the following day and drugged and attempted murder left on the side of the road to get rid of the evidence. But there was a plan for my life. I staggered to a payphone and they found me. I was able to get to my mom. Unfortunately, 20 years ago, there was no task force in Miami, and so these traffickers went free. I saw them recruiting a 10-year-old little boy on the side of the road, and um, they looked at me like they saw a ghost. That's when I realized they weren't my friends. They weren't anything real. See, they set up this false image that they're your family, that you can trust them, but the end is for their gain and your exploitation. Thankfully, I got away from them, but I would be recruited again in my middle school, and this time I would get worse into drugs. My friend's father was a trafficker, and he used his daughter to recruit other 14-year-old girls. I got trafficked to a brothel in Broward County, addicted to cocaine, and sold. I wasn't willingly, voluntarily engaging in prostitution. I didn't want to be a prostitute. I wanted to be a child. They stole my innocence, they got me addicted to drugs, and before you knew it, they got me suspended from school when I tried to fight for my dignity. I was embarrassed with my mom and she told me, it's okay, I'll help you work through your addiction. She didn't understand what had happened. I didn't understand what had happened. There were no NGOs doing anti-trafficking work and education and awareness. So now I go into public schools and I tell kids what the warning signs are so they don't have to be recruited. And over a dozen kids in Dade and Broward counties have told me that they've been trafficked, they've been recruited, that they were in the process of recruitment because these fools use children to recruit other children. I escaped. They planted drugs in my purse and got me suspended from school. I fought for my dignity in whatever little way I could, but eventually the addiction took over and then I wound up being trafficked again in my own apartment building. You see, trafficking and traffickers happens in every neighborhood in America. You just need to know what to look for. I wound up being sold right down the street from here in Brickell Avenue to a man with AIDS. I remember the whole day we spent on the boat out here in the intercoastal, they were selling me on this life, on money, on freedom, that I could have everything I wanted. Who cares, who wants to go to school at 15? I thought, I've, I've got it made, until I got back to the apartment and this man with scars on his face came for me and they said, he's here for you, get upstairs, right down the street from here. I said, I don't wanna go with him. And they said, I don't care what you want, little girl, get upstairs, that's what you're here for. That's when I knew I had become a coke whore for them. And that's what they used to call the little girls. I thought I was in control, I thought I had this, but I didn't have anything. They owned me and they sold me as they decided to, and, and who, to whoever paid the highest price. And I found myself being raped in this upstairs apartment in Brickell Avenue with this man. And it was only by the grace of God that this man got sick and I was spared from contracting the AIDS disease. Because I found out the next day that this man was infecting all of the girls in our group. There was a myth that if you have sex with little girls, you lose your AIDS disease. That wasn't true, and my friends died. As a result, I was safe. I heard what she said, AIDS. It's not like today that they have medication. You can go on to live a long life. 20 years ago, that meant something. And I turned and I walked away and I said, I never want to have anything to do with these people. I saw what they were doing. I saw who they were. They were lying to us. They didn't love us. They didn't care. They were willing to sell me. They were willing to kill me. And I told my mom, you have to fight for me. I can't tell you what's happening, but I just need you to fight for me if they come looking for me. And they came because they manipulate. They believe you're part of their property, that they own you. And eventually, I wound up um, fighting with them. My mom got them kicked out. I got recruited once more in a modeling scam. I went to the police and I told them, please believe me, but they wouldn't. And now, finally, when I walked away, I had the feeling I need to go back to school and make something of my life. And God spoke to my heart and I got my bachelor's degree, my master's of law degree, and now my PhD. And now I go and I tell other girls that I work alongside law enforcement. So if you'd like to help us, check out our website. There is hopeforme.org. If there's hope for me, there's hope for you, and there's hope for anyone. Thank you, Maria. Thank you.
But before the evening is through, we want you to go to the intention, take a piece of temple paper, Joss paper, and write your vision for the future. Okay, and now I leave you with the fantastic, la bella, Dr. Elizabeth King. Oh, I need some applause. Come on. Woo! I did not come up here with a cane for that little applause. Come on. Buena Miami. La doctora está in the house. Aquí in the house. La doctora está con ustedes. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is awesome. Bueno. I have so much to tell you, but I only have a few minutes, so I'm going to say it quick. Miami, you rock. You rock. Rise up and dance. Rise up and dance. That is awesome. This is awesome. I am a doctor that specializes in trauma, and when I hear the stories and when I've met the people, all of you have your story an incredible story of strength and of courage. You honor me and humble me. What I want you to know is that you have us behind you. I'm gonna give you three tips before I get down from here. If you are right now in, in a home with domestic violence or in a situation that you need to get out, I want you to rise up, rise up and speak out. I want you to rise up and find your resources and tell them you need help. And I want you to rise up and know that you are loved, that you are loved. Las amamos. Miami, mujeres, Latina a Latina. Yo soy doctora, pero soy mujer. I am a woman. I see women in my practice every day coming in. It doesn't matter what socioeconomic level you're at. Suffering in pain, I see your pain. But today, we are going to rise our voices and unite. And this is just the beginning. This is not the end. This is the beginning of rising up, dancing, and really fighting for justice. Levántense, mujeres, levántense. Stand up right now, stand up, stand up. Everybody, stand up, stand up. If you really believe in this, stand up, stand up, stand up. Levántense. I am honored. Miami, I love you. Women, I love you. Love yourself. Thank you. Hard act to follow, but I'm Dr. Lana Lee Arabasam. I am the medical director of elite obstetrics and gynecology. I am the director of robotic assisted laparoscopic surgery at West Boca Medical Center. I graduated from an Ivy League college, and every day in my practice, with my friends, with my colleagues, with the people that are here I talk to, and I'm part of the one in three women that are abused all over the world, and I am so proud to be here with One Billion Rising. What is my message to you? At the University of Pennsylvania, where I graduated, when we started our medical school class, they said, look to your left, look to your right. In 20 years, one of those people on the side of you will be the secretary general of medicine, and the other person will be something else important. I say look to your left and look to your right and know that one of the people that is sitting beside you has been the victim of abuse. Look to the left, look to the right, at any charity gala that you go to, 
at any mansion that you walk into, and don't you ever be envious of those women there, or be envious of the woman on the street driving in her convertible Bentley, or on her yacht, because you don't know if that little 15-year-old is about to be taken home to be trafficked down the street as the wonderful woman here shared with us in her story. You don't know. And that's the message that we're here to say. Knowledge is power. Be transparent. Be open. And let's shine a light. Let's clear out the shadows. Let's make sure that we're aware. Because all those titles that I talked about, the fact that I am all that, well, I was in a situation that was incredibly toxic. I was in a situation that was impossible to believe. And every day I would walk out with my Dr. Sam mask and pretend that I was something that I wasn't. And anybody here that's out pretending and has a mask on and is afraid to talk about it, you can come to me because I've been there and I know what it's like to spend a night crying, thinking you can't make it one more day. And we, with One Billion Rising, are going to change that. Again, we're standing up. One Billion Rise, knowledge is power, and thank you for coming out. My name is Constance Collins. I'm here at the Lotus House Women's Shelter in Overtown, Miami, Florida. We are rising to give voice. The common thread that we all share here is a history of trauma, usually starting in childhood, but oftentimes leading to a life of domestic violence, uh, street violence. Women who are homeless survive by being invisible. In this movement, we rise together to celebrate our collective oneness, to celebrate the path to healing, to raise awareness, to nurture and love and care for ourselves and all the women around the world. Join us. <laughs> okay. I am Tracy Wilson Morning, and I am rising because it's my responsibility. I am rising for my daughter. I am rising for my sons. I am rising because the woman who raised me taught me to stand strong and to be free and to stand in my truth. She is a woman of strength who has endured and survived so much in her life, and I thank God for her, and it is because of her that I can rise. I've been blessed all my life to be surrounded by amazing women that encouraged me and, and lifted me and directed me and guided me. And I know not everyone has that, but I know that if we give everyone that opportunity, that chance to see that light and that reflection in themselves, we can change this world. And this is a responsibility that belongs not only to the women of this world, but to all of us, because it's the women that cradle and love and nurture the men and the boys of this world. And that is how we make a difference. My name is Tracy Sierra, and I'm a domestic violence detective with the city of Miami Beach. I am rising because during my 13 years as a law enforcement officer, I've witnessed the devastating impact that domestic violence can have on women. I'm rising because I've seen the fear in their eyes. I am rising because I've tried to help them deal with their anxiety the best way I can. And I'm rising because I've wiped away way too many tears. While relationships can be emotional at times, they should never get to the point where you're physically abused. I'm rising for women like Leah, and her son, Javen. Leah fought back against her abuser and is now living happier and healthier than she's ever been before. I'm rising to end domestic violence. Levanto mis manos al cielo De rodillas oro Ya no tengo más temor, libre caminar.
Good evening. Bonsoir. My name is Marlene Bastien, and I'm the director of FUM, Haitian Women of Miami. First and foremost, I would like to thank all the organizers with a special thank to Maria for putting this great event together. I'm here to share with you the story of a group that oftentimes live in the shadow. They live in the shadow days in and days out, not because they are criminals, not because they are bad people, 
Not because they are nasty women. They live in the shadow, suffering in silence because they are undocumented. Realize that I didn't say that they are illegal because I do believe that no human being on this earth is illegal. These women from Sayo, esas mujeres, they keep their end of the bargain in this great nation of ours, days in and days out. They work two, three jobs. They take care of their children. They wash clothes. They cook. And yet, they are beaten by those who promise to love them till death tear them apart. Unlike many other people, they cannot go forward. They are afraid to go forward even after VAWA because oftentimes, my friends, when they go forward, when they call the police, they are the ones who get arrested. And at FAM, at the Haitian Women of Miami, I witness that, our employees witness that every day. So today, my friends, I'm glad that we are standing here. We are rising one billion strong to tell the world and to be the voice of these women. We need to be their voices because oftentimes they are scared. They are afraid. They live in the shadow. They cannot come out. I'm, I'm glad to be here to join my voices with the one billion rising to send a message to the leaders of our nation and tell them that the time has come to do the right thing so that these women can finally come out of the shadow. The time has come. The time has come for society to pay attention. The time has come for our leaders to create conditions so that our women and children are safe. Because oftentimes, even when they stand up, they risk everything that they have to come out of the shadow. Guess what? They still end up dead because those we put in position of powers to protect them did not do their job. Gender violence is a human right issue, and it is about time that we hold those who are, support, who are supposed to keep women safe, we hold them accountable. Because again, I say, human right is a, gender violence is a human right issue. So, yes, you can clap, it's okay. So, I'm happy that we are here. I'd like you to stand up with me, stand up, and I'd like you to raise your voices. Join the one billion around the globe to raise your voices, to say no to gender violence, no to human trafficking, and repeat this. I pledge from this day forth, that I will join the one billion around the world to stop gender violence, to stop human trafficking, not only for women in this great United States of America, but for women around the world because none of us is safe until we are all safe. None of us is free until we are all free. Let's continue to rise. Let's continue to fight. Liberty!
tonight? How are we doing tonight? Woo! My name is Mina Shaw. I am the founder and CEO of Smart Women Making Money, and this is Suzanne McDowell. She is the president and CEO of Circle of One Marketing, and we are honored and grateful to be here with you tonight. I am here tonight because coming from a home where physical and emotional abuse was constant, I know what it's like to feel completely helpless in a situation and want it to change so badly. And because I've been able to rise up, I know what it truly takes to rise up and break free from that. I remember when the abuse was happening, when I was a child, I wanted it so badly for it to stop but I didn't know how to do that. And if you would ask me back then what the answer was, I really don't know what I would have said. Because what I didn't know back then, which I know now, is that in order to break free, the first step is to simply speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Because in our home growing up, when my mother was beaten, when my brother was beaten, when I was beaten, there were very clear directions afterward. Don't you say a word. Don't you tell anyone. But the problem with not saying a word is that when you don't speak up about what's happening to you, you are denying the very existence of that happening. What does that mean? That means that when you don't speak up about what's happening to you or to someone else, you are ignoring and denying the severity right, of that situation. In order to break free, you must speak up. You must speak up because it is the very first step. What would the ripple effect be of you and you and you speaking up? How many of you here in the audience, by a show of hands, how many of you know that by speaking up, you could make a profound difference in your life or the life of someone that you care about? How many of you want to make that difference? Because I know I do. So tonight we have an opportunity. If you truly want to make that difference, tonight Suzanne and I here are going to lead you and invite you an invitation to make a promise, to plant that seed, to make a promise, to speak up. If you have been beaten, if you have been raped, if you have witnessed an injustice, to speak up. There's an intention tent right here, and that's your opportunity. Because when you do, when you bring it out, you make it real. And when you make it real, now you have the opportunity to do something about it. So how many of you are up for making a promise to speak up tonight? By show of hands. Woo! So we're going to do that together. And to do that, if you could all get on your feet. And so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, one after another. And when I ask this question, at the end, I'll raise my hand. We'll raise our hands together. And the answer to that question, the promise is, I will speak up. And Suzanne will be right here with you. I will speak up. So what are you going to say? I will speak up. With all the passion you have, what will you say? I will speak up. Fantastic. So tonight, as One Billion Rising, we are making a promise right, to release deep, dark secrets to speak out and speak against our abusers, right? And to speak up for what is important to end violence against women. So I have a question for you. If you have been wronged or you have been hurt, what will you do? I will speak up. If you have been raped or assaulted, what will you do? I will speak up, right? If you have witnessed someone being hurt, what will you do? I will speak up. What if you're scared? What will you do? I will speak up. What if somebody tells you no one's going to believe you? I will speak up. Right? What if you have been sexually assaulted or you're being sexually harassed at work? What will you do? I will speak up. Right? And if someone is telling you to shut up, 
what will you do? I will speak up. And to end violence against women, what will you do? I will speak up. One more time, what will you do? I will speak up. And when you speak up together as one billion rising, we can and will end violence against women in our lifetime. Thank you. That is our intention. Last call to write your intentions. Susan Miner's walking around their baskets. Write your intention. Listen to Jane Fonda and write, because later on we have the burning bull. I'm Jane Fonda. I'm an actor and a writer, and I'm a member of the board. And I'm rising because my mother was sexually abused when she was eight years old, and it damaged her life forever. She was never able to really love or to not feel guilty. And she killed herself when she was 42, and those two things are related. I'm rising because I work with young girls, most of whom are poor, most of whom have been victims of sexual abuse. And I'm rising because I'm over it. We have to stop violence against women, and when that happens, everything in the world will change. I am a visionary pioneer in women's health. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I live in Maine and I have spent my life helping women. I am rising because women being healthy and happy in their bodies is the number one priority on planet Earth today. And anything that I can do to reach this goal, I am on board with. I will be rising with my tango community here in Maine. One in three women on the planet will be raped or beaten in her lifetime. One billion women violated is an atrocity. One billion women dancing is a revolution. If one billion women and the men who love them and the children all rise up and dance on the planet on the same day, we will transform all the pain and darkness of violence into light. We'll be boogieing and dancing on February 14th because this is a day of rise. Come out and dance, we are celebrating. Dancing and rising, we celebrate, no, no, no domestic, no abuse. We dance, we rise, let's celebrate. Rise and dance, no crime, no crime. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> okay. Maya be a man. 一个自信有奉献而生的老人。She who may win, she have killed. They have chosen a good old Shelley. A dollar is a card. In as valley. जो जानने से अधिक सुनने की सराहन करता है. Che cerca la bontà oltre il controllo. Che chora quando a dor è profonda. A mi fa vane la cosa. Puedo apreciar una caricia más que el rendimiento. We are foreign, we are as more like the cool. Las mis lanzas han vivido en un mechón. No hubo que clavar, la oda muestra que es la moto. La nixaña o no me viene, no falle que yo vivo. Que yo cese de pretender y abro todas mis partes. Rester trop longtemps endormi. May I cherish, respect, and love my mother. وأترجم صدى الحب لها لمحبة كل النساء والكائنات الحية.
My name is Leila Lombardo. I'm, a, I'm an artist. And I have found myself... I'm an artist in the performing arts. I work in theater, music, and dance. And I have uh, found myself some 15 plus years ago uh, with the opportunity to facilitate workshops in shelters. And in that moment, my heart opened. And I realized that this is where art lives, in the streets, in the shelters, in the communities, in the homes, and in the hearts of the people. I've since dedicated myself and my work to social change through the arts. Listen up for the drum call! 